Hello everyone, my name is Sonali and I am a sustainability consultant based out of Delhi, India. I am a lead AP in building design and construction and today we are going to learn about the materials and resources category under lead V4. So this video is part of our social initiative where we aim to train people who want to give their lead GA exam and make a difference. Uh, this is part 2 of the material and resources category. So in part one, we have uh, discussed the two categories that you can see on your screen. Uh, the, that is building life cycle impact reduction, where we talked about LCA and uh, EPDs and what is uh, what are the what is the importance of an LCA early in early design phases of a project, and also we discussed uh, building product disclosures. Uh, specifically, we discussed about the EPDs, the environmental product declarations and what does it mean and how many types of EPDs uh, does a product have or are available in the market. So uh, apart from this, we also have several other categories uh, that define a uh, product's environmentally, uh, environmental performance. So we're going to be discussing those and also we're going to be discussing the uh, waste management strategies in this uh, video. Uh, moving on, we uh, first uh, we have some key terms, key terminologies that you can look at when you are uh, preparing for the exam because this might come up as part of the questions or uh, come up as direct definition to answer. So this is uh, something that you can refer later. Uh, this is also uh, this I have just discussed now that we have discussed some of the environmentally preferable materials and we'll discuss the rest based on other credits uh, in this video and also the waste management. So moving on to the environmentally preferred material. So uh, talking about other strategies that uh, define a project product as environmental friendly. Uh, so we also need to source products that are that have a verified source of their raw materials. So in this category, this I mean this uh, strategy corresponds to the credit uh, building product disclosure and optimization uh, towards the sourcing of raw materials. So in this pro in this uh, strategy, the project team has to select products that are verified uh, to have been extracted in a responsible manner. So their raw materials are extracted or manufactured in a responsible manner uh, without harming the environment. So that's one of the other criteria apart from the EPDs uh, when it comes to materials. Similarly, I mean this one corresponds to this credit which has two points. So delving into the credit, there are two options in this. The first option is that the project team can uh, use 20 permanently installed products from at least five manufacturer and they uh, that have published their human and ecological impacts specifically uh, of their extraction process and various uh, source related impacts. So this can go for different type of declarations like the product can have self-declared reports and also the products can have third party verified uh, CSR reports which is corporate sustainability reports. So both of them have different valuation credit criteria when it comes to uh, adding up the materials and making it to a count of 20. So that's also something that comes up later when you prepare for the lead BD plus C exam. But this is just to understand that uh, how the valuation works. So different products or different types of products are valued at different uh, uh, different levels. So a product that has a self-declared report, it is considered 0.5 of its value and a product that has a third party verified uh, report uh, that has uh, that is valued at its exact value that is 1x. And uh, similarly, if you see these are some of the material declarations like the first one is uh, basically uh, a self-declared list where you see that uh, the material sources the raw materials has been listed here and this one is uh, a third party verified CSR report. So uh, looking at the option two in the option two uh, of this uh, credit we have leadership extraction practices. So the first option always aims for uh, getting a product that has already been certified and the second option generally goes for optimization. So in this option the project team can get point if they use the products that optimize their extraction. So the first option is basically disclosing your raw materials or disclosing your practices and the second option is basically the product that has optimized their extraction process by basically reusing their materials or using their recycled content. 
so uh, let's say they're not uh, extracting extracting any virgin material but they're basically mixing it with some recycled material so that's uh, that's one of the optimization that they can target so in this the criteria is that uh, is either of them so the the product that is optimizing they should have one of these criteria they should be meeting one of the criteria one is extended producer responsibility uh, bio based material they could be wood products they could be material reuse or recycle content so in this there are different standards that they have to follow so extended producer responsibility so this is something that uh, basically uh, this is a waste management strategy that promotes integrating life cycle environmental costs associated with goods into the market uh, price of the products since the producers have the greatest control over the product design they also have the ability and responsibility to reduce their products toxicity and waste so that's where uh, this comes in so the standard here is organization for economic cooperation and development or oecd and then you have the rest of the products so this one has a 0.5x valuation and the rest of the products are uh, bio based materials uh, food products material reuse and recycle content so bio based materials they should meet the sustainable agricultural network standards the wood products they should meet the forest stewardship council uh, they should be certified and material reuse basically it uh, it must be salvage refurbished or reuse products let's say if you're using it from a different building or an abandoned building uh, or a demolished building then it should be salvaged refurbished or reused and uh, the last one is recycle content so recycle content here uh, focuses on two aspects one is post consumer recycle content and the other is the pre consumer recycle content so this is basically these are all the standards and criteria so the next uh, strategy is considering the material ingredients now that we know that how the materials were extracted we need to know what are those materials so this strategy focuses on what is the chemical composition of your uh, of your product so basically it's uh, it's like you should know how much pulp is there in your orange juice or what is there in your food so it's similar to that so in this credit the pro project teams are basically rewarded if they select the products which has an inventory of their chemical ingredients using acceptable practices and for selecting products verified to minimize the use and generation of harmful substances so this harmful substances this uh, this could also be a direct implication on occupant health so that's where the ingredients are important so yeah so that's the goal of this credit to support the manufacturer that disclose their information about their products and helping the project team to make informed decisions so yeah and uh, the last strategy is the location of the material so this is uh, why we've written location valuation factor is because this uh, plays an important role in all the credits in material uh, disclosure all three credits so if the product is sourced within 100 miles of the project site it is actually valued 2x of its actual valuation if you source one product it will be considered two product two product of that equivalency uh, in the calculations later on it's it's not uh, it can be overwhelming but it's not something that will come up in your exam as a calculation but it's important to understand that uh, locating uh, getting a product uh, within 100 miles is important and is given preference uh, when you are selecting your products so yeah so that's given a 2x value and the last strategy is sustainable purchasing policy so yeah so things do not stop once the building is built because the major challenge always lies with the maintenance of the buildings and its systems so environmentally preferable materials need to be selected and purchased even after the building is built throughout the operation of the building so lead recommends to implement a sustainable purchasing policy that should include uh, like three items in it so similar to what we have already discussed identifying local sources of environmentally preferable material using local material reduces the negative environmental impact associated with transportation of the material and also it supports the local economy uh developing a sustainable material policy so uh basically it's about uh, trying to use rapidly renewable materials 
regional materials materials that are salvaged from old buildings and prefer materials that have recycled content in them so one good example is that let's say for all the wood products the building will use in the lifespan all of them must be certified from forest stewardship council also uh, known as fsc and green cleaning products so your purchasing policy doesn't limit the materials just in the building or just limit to the building materials it goes beyond that so it talks about the green cleaning products the products that are used for the cleaning uh, of the building during its operational phase so uh, basically these products are the ones that use little or no toxins uh, that way they are healthier for the building occupants and also they are good for the environment so these are basically the strategies that we discussed in this video uh, use of products with epds this we discussed in the first part use verified sourcing of raw materials consider material ingredients location valuation factor and sustainable purchasing policy so now that we've discussed all the all about the materials part in this category we'll move to the waste uh, section before uh, let's take a question so uh, select two characteristics of environmentally preferable materials option a uh, reduced energy from transportation option b made of chemical based materials option c materials with high embodied energy option d long lasting material option e material should replenish slowly and steadily uh, you can take a pause and uh, think what uh, what the right answer is so the right answer is option a reduced energy from transportation and d long lasting material <coughs> materials uh, should have low energy from transportation and should be long lasting so that we don't have to keep changing them with new virgin materials so yeah so that's uh, that's the main intent of uh, or that's the characteristics out of these uh, options so now we'll move to the intent and strategies for waste management so it's a very small topic and easy to understand because i think it's very relatable when it comes to our own homes because uh, we we deal with this on a day to day basis so this is important to relate <coughs> so the intent of this uh, this credit is or the strategy is that we need to reduce the amount of waste that is going to the landfill right so uh, we keep hearing these terms like reduce reuse and recycle this should be the mantra uh, during construction operation and removal of the building so naturally the intent is to reduce the amount of waste going into landfill so a net zero waste building is the one that diverts all its waste from going into a landfill so ideally we should all be designing to be net zero waste at least uh, this should mean that we are buying consciously we are not buying plastic uh, packed items and uh, that's that's basically the intent of this uh, the strategy so there are different uh, strategies by which you can achieve this the first one is basically to reduce your reduce the size of your building footprint so basically accommodating uh, more occupants in a building or designing it to a way where it is optimized uh, for uh, for the occupants that has that it has been designed for and uh, implement recycling plans so uh, it is very easy to use something and throw it because we do not think where uh, will that thing go eventually so uh, the vision is very limited to our houses or offices our vision at least and recycling is not done everywhere as it is little cumbersome so lead requires project teams to supply a recyclable storage plan for all the regular recyclable items such as newspaper glass bottles paper cardboard plastics and metals so they must uh, the project team they must choose to offer recyclable option recycling options for two of these items either batteries electronic waste or mercury containing lamp in addition to the uh, to the regular recyclable items that we just discussed newspaper glass bottles paper cardboard plastics and metals and uh, other strategy is to conduct a waste stream audit so now this comes up in the operational phase so <clears throat> strategies if you think about it strategies can be most affected when you know what kind and how much waste is being generated so that the measures according to that can be taken so a waste stream audit uh, is important or uh, like a regular waste stream audit is important 
that takes samples of all the waste produced in the facility and it provides as to what percentage of stream is being generated uh, by the occupants. <coughs> and then accordingly the recycling, recycling infrastructure can be arranged for that particular project. Uh, the fourth is implement construction and solid waste management policies. So LEED actually makes it mandatory for the projects to have construction and demolition waste management uh, because uh, construction waste is something that uh, that is being generated irrespective of the occupancy and that is done during the construction stage stage so it is important that it can there is a plan from the contractor where uh, there is a plan to recycle or reuse uh, most of the items that are available on site so this this construction waste that we're talking about it includes your waste resulting from new construction or your renovation and demolition of buildings these waste materials include your concrete, wood, asphalt, gypsum, metals, bricks, glass and various other materials and landfills everywhere in globe receive tons of thousands of waste in which majority of it could, could be recycled and reused. So diverting construction waste from landfills helps preserve the environment and is also cheaper for the project as we tend to spend less money on waste hauling fees. So LEED makes it mandatory for the projects to have uh, a waste management plan for construction and demolition and established waste diversion goals uh, then on from the, of the project and monitor track waste and recycling so the second last strategy is to monitor track waste and recycling so measurement and verification aspect of a waste management plan is just as important as measuring waste and energy use Waste haulers are the best way for tracking your waste diversion. Regular monitoring will help you set more realistic goals on how to reduce overall debris sent to the landfill. And uh, then there's composting your food waste, uh, the last strategy. So the food waste is quite significant part of the waste generated on daily basis. Look at your home and I'm sure food waste is the majority waste uh, of our homes. And this can be utilized for composting. It starts by segregating your waste from other waste and the compost later on can be used in agricultural land, landscape areas and even uh, burn for energy in local digester. So that's where this strategy is also considered or acknowledged by LEED as part of the uh, recycling or uh, diversion of waste. So these are the strategies that we discussed in terms of waste management. Uh, one is reduce the size of the building footprint, okay. uh, implement recycling plans, conduct waste stream audits, implement a construction and solid waste management policy, monitor track waste and recycling, compost food waste. So that's all for the strategies uh, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much materials and resources categories. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any doubts, feel free to contact us. And do not forget to check out our practice question bank. Uh, the link is provided in the description. And see you in the next video uh, for the IAQ category. Thank you.